Hi, it is the 2nd of May, a Wednesday, and a time for another update from Prophecy in the News. I'm Gary Stearman, and uh, today we're going to be looking at some war games in the Middle East. Surprise, surprise, more war games in the Middle East? We've been reporting on these for a long time. We have a new round of war games that started as of yesterday, May the 1st. Uh, and we read from Deb Kefile, <coughs> Israel's Defense Minister Ehud Barak offered the view this week that the next round of six power talks with Iran taking place on May 23rd in Baghdad would lead nowhere, throwing cold water on current optimism. And uh, I don't know where the current optimism was coming from because I don't have any. As for U.S. media reports of a lessening in war tensions over Iran because of the internal debate in Israel over an independent attack, they were soon overtaken by significant military steps embarked on Tuesday, May 1st, that's yesterday, by U.S. forces, Israeli forces, and Iranian forces. The large-scale IDF forces war game on the borders of Syria in the Golan Heights region and Lebanon was quickly followed by naval drills along Iran's southern Persian Gulf Coast by its border guards. <clears throat> Tehran said to be making good on the policy agreed to with Syria and Hezbollah allies in early 2011 that would counter any Western or Israeli military movement in the region with a comparable response. And of course, that's the way it's been going for some time. <clears throat> Israeli army spokesmen were said to be cagey about the scale and nature of the exercise beyond uh, preparing people in the north for heavy military traffic on regional highways and the sounds of gunshots and explosions. Israeli army spokesman, hmm, cagey. I think I would be cagey too. We're talking about uh, war games here, and we're talking about trying to uh, play psychological warfare with the enemy, and of course the thrust of that is to keep secret anything that you might be planning. Military sources have disclosed that the IDF drilled a strengthened and proactive presence in the north to meet Al-Qaeda's looming presence there. And I just want to really emphasize that because Al-Qaeda uh, in spite of reports that al-Qaeda is waning, is actually getting much stronger, moving uh, through Iraq and into Syria and into Lebanon to back up the Hezbollah forces there. So uh, we're going to be hearing more and more about al-Qaeda, I think, in the near future. Uh, on Monday last, Israel started building a defensive wall 10 meters high. That's 30 plus feet high and uh, two kilometers long, about 1.6 miles along its border with Lebanon to protect the Israeli population and highways in northern Galilee uh, from sniper fire coming from the, Le the uh, Lebanese village of uh, Kafar Kila in the Hezbollah-dominated south. Well, there's nothing much new there except just a strengthening of forces in the region prior to uh, a possible attack. Uh, coming from the north into Israel, and we know that the forces of Hezbollah are terrific, and they have said to they are said to have placed at least forty thousand rockets uh, in bunkers along Israel's northern border. So for a long time, we've known about uh, a possible uh, attack coming from the north. This at the time that quote unquote six power talks are being planned for May twenty third. And so on the eve of those talks, we have uh, shows of force, we have gamesmanship, we have uh, uh, various and sundry uh, kinds of military games going on. <clears throat> the Galilee Panhandle region, as it is called, and Golan could become flashpoints for exchanges of cross-border fire. So, too, Iran is taking into account an operation to destroy its own nuclear facilities. And so the, the thrust of this article is that we have uh, a flashpoint along the Golan Heights region. We have another flashpoint along uh, the uh, western Iranian region. And we have now two sets of war games that have been played. <coughs> the forces that are arrayed against each other are the forces of Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, uh, Shiite Muslim groups uh, 
countered against primarily United States and Sunni Muslim forces in the Arabian Peninsula. And I wanted to read a Bible prophecy that I think speaks to this. Uh, and we read in Ezekiel, and of course, Ezekiel is very famous for, for the 38th chapter of his prophecy, which talks about a, a huge Mideast war. But we don't often read from Ezekiel uh, the 29th chapter that, that defines the merchants of Tarshish. Uh, Ezekiel 20, uh, <clears throat> actually 27, 25, the ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in thy market, thou wast resplendent, made a very glorious in the midst of the seas. Thy rowers, that is thy sailors, have brought thee into great waters. The east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. Thy riches, thy fares, thy merchandise, thy mariners, uh, thy pilots, calkers, and occupiers of merchandise. In other words, the whole seafaring business and all the me thy men of war that are in thee, and all thy company which is in the midst of thee shall fall into the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. And these are <clears throat> the, the global armies and the global uh, trade missions that are supported by the armies. Uh, Ezekiel refers to them as the merchants of Tarshish. And then when you get into Ezekiel 38, <clears throat> they're referred to again as being in league with Sheba and Dedan, whom we believe to be the Kuwaitis, <clears throat> uh, those in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, etc. And we have in Ezekiel 38, 13, Sheba and Dedan, that would be all the Arab nations, and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, that is the northern army, art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thine army to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold? take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil. And so we have this picture, and it's, it's been a fuzzy picture in the past. It's becoming clearer and clearer. And we have long said that the uh, merchant armies of the Western Alliance uh, supporting <clears throat> the Arab forces in the Arabian Peninsula would be one power block in the Middle East with Israel in the middle. The other power block would be Persia, that is Iran, uh, and Russia, as given in Ezekiel 38. Well, reading about these war games, what do you have? <clears throat> you have Tehran on one side. You have the United States and Israel on the other side. And the uh, wild card in the whole operation is the Arab Peninsula. And by the way, the United States has just flown its, uh, its latest strategic fighter bombers into the region. Closing out this article, there was also an outpouring of comment from Tehran about last week's deployment of United States F-22 Raptors on the UAE's Al Dafra Air Base opposite Iran's southern shores. So uh, to put the cherry on the Sunday, as they say, the United States has now placed its uh, F-22 Raptors in the mix. That is the highest tech fighter plane, fighter bomber in the entire world. It is super stealth, computer guided. It is a, an absolutely unbeatable uh, weapon. And now those have been placed adjacent uh, the western shores of Iran. Something is being prepared. And we're trying to uh, put it together here for you, day by day. And in the meantime, we're always looking up. Yeah.